What if a person has a problem where um, maybe I'm a vertebra and I move back and forth like this all day long. But I'm a part of a spine which is also should move back and forth all day long. And I may be a vertebra which moves sideways all day long. And maybe I'm a vertebra which can move flexion extension all day long. And maybe I have different combinations of movement. Maybe I'm breathing in and out and there's flexion extension patterns with respiration even if I'm just sitting there lying quietly. And any time I walk, there's rotation patterns. And any time I walk, there's also lateral flexion patterns. And there are all these patterns of activity going on all at the same time, 24 hours a day, some of them, for certainly for flexion extension patterns. And, and so something happens in my endocrine system. And maybe my pineal doesn't fire like it should, or my pituitary fires more than it should. And the pituitary pineal have sort of a balance we'll talk about. And if that's the case, we see a gait pattern where there's maybe a greater right stride than there is a left stride. And so the person would have like more zigs and zags. They'd walk, I'm exaggerating of course, but they'd walk like this, greater right stride. Now they wouldn't walk like that, but they'd have something like that going on. So then in my case, if I'm a vertebra in that spine, I'm going back and forth normally, but because of this pituitary pineal imbalance, I'm going back but not forth. Going back but not forth back but not forth. And as I normally move back and forth, there's all kinds of feedback from the muscle spindles and the joint receptors and even the fascia, maybe even the skin receptors around where I'm moving to give normal affrontation of the body, stimulating the different pathways in the spinal cord towards normal activity, both for blocking nociception and for normalizing muscle activity and keeping autonomic activity at a normal level locally. And then the mechanoreceptors going up to higher levels into the uh, brainstem and then also into the cerebellum for all the things the cerebellum does to coordinate and then feeding back into the brain stem and feeding back into the mesencephalon, and higher in the brain stem and into the opposite cortex and all these things are firing based on my normal ranges of motion. So now I get in a pattern where there's a pineal deficiency or increased pituitary which are sort of the same thing and moving back but not forth. Back but not forth. And so what happens to all those receptors? The joint receptors, the, the muscle receptors and so on that aren't firing that forth pattern. They, they don't fire. They, they don't fire, and that's a functional deaffrontation. That's a loss of frequency of firing of those neurons. And that has consequences. It has consequences at every level, in the spinal cord and on up to the cortex. What if I normally have some lateral flexion movement? And what if I'm in a person who has a hyperadrenic pattern? Or maybe a hyperestrogen pattern, because that's steroid as well. And so my spine is sort of moving more this way than it is this way. And so as a vertebra, I'm moving more this way than this way. I'm getting more like back and forth lateral flexion patterns. And all of a sudden I'm getting back but not forth. Back but not forth. Back but not forth. And so I've got this endocrine problem where there's too much adrenal activity or maybe too much estrogen or maybe too much testosterone or any of the steroids causing a lateral flexion of the spine but also causing me as a part of that spine to move back but not forth as much. What happens to all those joint receptors, muscle spinal receptors and so on from that fourth part of the movement that aren't moving properly? They're not driving the spinal cord, they're not driving the cerebellum, they're not driving the brainstem or the cortex or all the places that they go. So there's a deaffrontation there. What happens if I'm a person who under a lot of stress? What happens if that stress is creating a fight or flee reaction? So my normal flexion extension patterns like this are more in flexion than extension. And so I'm a vertebra and I'm moving back and forth, but I'm moving forward and back, maybe let's say, forward and back in this case, because I'm in a lot of stress and I'm a part of a spine that's a lot of stress, I'm moving forward but I'm not moving back. And forward but I'm not moving back. What about all those extensor activities of all those joint receptors, muscle spindles, even skin and fascial receptors of the, the backward portion that's not happening? They don't fire, that's a functional deaffrontation. And so we've got this combination of these three spinal patterns in the center of the spine, concepts of flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation, and any one of them can be related to autonomic or systemic autonomic or systemic endocrine imbalances. And, and when they are, then the vertebrae and the vertebra and the vertebrae don't have normal range of motion. And so they don't have normal range of motion, you get the affrontation, which then can sometimes create a vicious cycle of activity because you've got asymmetry of function, asymmetry of function, asymmetry of function, and that asymmetry then sets up a, a secondary pattern which sometimes reinforces the stress, reinforces the endocrine imbalance, reinforces the whatever it is that's going on with the patient, and they get stuck in this vicious cycle. And so some chiropractor comes along and adjusts them, boom, moves me back, and I'm moving back and forth. And that's great because now I've got more range of motion and I've got both back and forth firing and I've got mechanoreceptors firing and I've got, I've got uh, joint receptors and all the different things that are mechanoreceptors firing and that's great but because I've got this pituitary pineal problem the pineal's not firing pretty soon I wind down again because I'm part of a whole spine which is torqued too much in one direction or I've got this pattern where I get adjusted all of a sudden I'm moving back and forth and lateral flexion good again 
but I'm moving lateral flexion. And the lateral flexion is fine for a little while, but my hyperestrogenism, well, in my case, maybe hypertestosteronism, I guess I got a hyperestrogenism too. I could actually. But maybe it makes it wind down again, so all of a sudden I'm moving back and not forth again. And so then maybe I'm uh, stuck in a, some, something's creating a sympathetic drive in my body. Some, some sympathetic drive is happening somewhere, and so the, my spine is too much in flexion, and I'm, I'm flexing like this, and I can't go into extension. Some chiropractor comes and puts me in extension. Ah, that's much better. And now I'm moving fine again, but then that sympathetic dominant pattern with a need for more parasympathetic activity kind of takes over and drives me back into deaffrontation again. So then some quintessential applications trained doctor comes along, and he balances the pituitary pineal. He balances the adrenal or the steroid thyroid balance, and he balances the sympathetic parasympathetic. And all of a sudden now, when I get an adjustment, I maintain my range of motion. And I give normal affrontation, which is balance, which is normal frequency of firing, which continues to create balance throughout the nervous system, and I get an optimum neurological function. And that's what we do when we treat the endocrine system. We have systemic effects, which may be manifested more at one individual vertebra than another, but they also may be manifested as part of the whole spinal activity. And so we're going to talk about things like, like, like uh, gait patterns, which relate to pineal pituitary, which we talk about lateral flexion, which relate to steroid and thyroid balance, which we've already talked about in the past. We talk about flexion extension patterns, which we've talked about in the past as well, but we're going to talk about how sometimes there could be a flexion extension pattern because the patient maybe doesn't have enough parasympathetic activity coming from some organ, which is causing more of a sympathetic dominance of the of the hypothalamus, and that somehow, because of that, is driving also the immune system off as well as the muscle balance off because of some autonomic effect causing the hypothalamus to adapt, which we would see in a spinal flexion problem because there's not enough parasympathetic to keep it balanced, so they're getting more sympathetic drive because of lack of parasympathetic feedback because some organs dysfunctioning. And so we get a reaction like this, which is also impacting the immune system, and we find when we're checking the immune system. So we got these three ranges of motion that could all be compromised in normal affrontation by endocrine and, and autonomic functions, which we're going to really be focusing on this weekend. So you got to fix the individual vertebrae, but you also got to fix the context where they're residing. And so that's what we're doing when we look at the endocrine system. And with so many other things that can impact centering the spine factors, injuries and emotional stress and other things we've talked about, uh, gut factors and so on, but these things can also have systemic effects um, uh, that we see as off-centering of the spine.